Welcome back to the show. Today's episode is sponsored by Ride Clean, the all-in-one solution for washing, waxing, and sealing your vehicle. Ride Clean is available at rideclean.co. Simply shake, spray, and wipe. Get a mirror-like finish. Made in America. Use promo code RB Podcast for 20% off and uh, some extra goodies that they'll throw in. That's rideclean.co, promo code RB Podcast. Also, make sure to visit rideboundless.net for more information on current guests, past guests, blogs, uh, sponsors, collaborations, and much more. That's rideboundless.net. We're thrilled to introduce our next guest, Stefan Yetterborn, founder of POC and now leading Cake, a company focused on high-performance, zero-emission off-road motorcycles with a mission to speed up our journey towards a zero-emission society. Stefan and Cake are revolutionizing the off-road motorcycle experience. Join us as we discuss Stefan's journey, the inspiration behind Cake, and the future of electric off-road motorcycles. Here we go. Friday. Where, where are you from? Where, where are you based right now? Uh, where, I, I'm in a small little town in California called Los Angeles. All right, there you go. It's a, it's a little village, you know. Yeah, yeah. With, with a lot of people, and you're in Switzerland, yeah. right? In Sweden. In Sweden. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah no worries. Uh, larger country, but very, you know, scarce population. So, but in Stockholm right now, and we actually had winter for the first time really this winter uh, which is strange i heard you had snow in california or in la yeah, last week it, it, it's been non-stop uh it's probably the coldest uh most rain and most snow since, since i've been here and i've been here only 30 something years all right there you go yeah so and now we got another storm coming in you know strange everything is upside down yeah and, and it's everywhere yeah. you talk to people. It doesn't matter what part of the world they're in. It doesn't matter. Um, it, 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 it's like we're all one. We're all one big yeah. community, one economy. And when somebody hurts here, it hurts there. And it's very strange times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I just had some questions. Uh, my podcast, uh, this is going to be episode 108. Been doing this for three years. Uh -huh. um, you know, I've interviewed Curtis Motorcycles, uh Harley dealers, uh, you know, now I'm getting into the race bike thing. And uh, I just recently picked up a, a live wire and the electrical motorcycle scene is, is, is it's growing fast. Yeah. Um, so a good friend of mine, he's from France. He told me about your company and I started looking up the history. And I, I was, I was very inspired by your guys' designs, the looks, uh, the work series is super fascinating. Um, yeah. Thank yeah, so I, how, how did you, um, well, we'll just get into it if you're ready. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so what inspired the uh, what inspired Cake and, and, and what drives the company's mission and values? Well, uh, you know, I've been an entrepreneur throughout my whole adult life pretty much. Uh, I, I, sometimes I wonder why, and I think that, that uh, I, don't, I, I don't stand authority, so I, I have to do my own thing. Anyhow, I, I've been... Um, uh, into product development, communication, and branding on a, uh, you know, when it comes to consumer products throughout, you know, for the past 40 years, pretty much. My previous company before starting Cake is a company named POC with a mission of saving lives and reducing consequences of accidents for gravity sports athletes, skiers, snowboarders, cyclists, and so forth, doing helmets and back protectors and protection. And, uh, on a yearly basis, there's an exhibition in Germany, uh, in Munich, named ISPO. And that's the first time I run into an electric, electric motorbike, and that's 2013. And it's, it kind of shouts at me, get me, you know, get me out in the woods, explore without polluting or without, you know, uh, disturbing. So I got one bike, and eventually, you know, two summers later, I had 15 electric motorbikes at the time, early stage. All different ones uh, with different, you know, uh, pros and cons, I'd say. And with no idea of, you know, starting a business, I was just soaked up into this amazing experience of getting out there. It was more like, you know, skiing powder uh, without the need for slope or, or snow. Right. And um, 
having been in product development throughout my you know whole, whole career, I couldn't resist starting to you know think what I believe should be done differently. And eventually, I, I I was so absorbed by this this whole thing that I realized that uh, I had to start a company, and I had this this uh, notion about where to go and, and basically what was going on, on in the market. And I'd say still to 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 a large extent was that that um, you know without bashing at anyone who's a gasoline uh, you know someone. But I think that the, the, the attitude within the market has been uh, to replicate the character of, uh, you know, a combustion ending mo engine motorbike. And that said, they, everyone was pretty much using the same chassis and then, then just swapping drivetrain from, from combustion to electric. And the consequence of that is that you need to put on tons of battery cells to get to the level of performance similar to the uh, former combustion engine bike. My take was very different. I was like, if I would build as light as I possibly could, I could reduce the number of, of, of needed battery cells. And that's where I started, you know, thinking about what could this actually become? And uh, when I had that challenge in front of me, that's when I kind of, you know, couldn't again resist and, and got going. So that's the, the, the broad the, backdrop. Yeah. It's interesting how how you've always been an entrepreneur, and people choose to be an entrepreneur, but you end up working more than if you work for you know a company, you know like yeah. And I think that I've been able to kind of conceptualize my life uh, within a, a corporate format. So I kind of uh, I kind of fuse uh, my values and 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 what gets me going. Uh, into a combined kind of driving or a compass. And then, you know, for me to be able to, to, to uh, execute on that or to, to, to implement that, I, I kind of structure a company around that. So that's how I've been doing all, all of my, 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 my journeys pretty much. That's how you've been succeeding. Um, can you discuss the development process of Cake's electric motorcycles and the utility vehicles? What sets them apart yeah. from other companies' yeah. electric vehicles? Yeah, so basically just taking a step back and speaking about our mission, it's to inspire towards emission, uh, towards zero emission by combining excitement with responsibility. And what we do is basically embracing sustainability, both from the commercial side of things, as well as the environmental side of things. And we do that by extending life cycles. So we want to produce something which is kind of, you know, long lasting and durable. And there are a number of pros in that sense, I'd say, and I potentially get back to it here during our, our, our chat. But yeah. basically that said, what we would, you know, if I try and define where we're at in terms of, you know, our what our vehicles would be doing, we do off-road and utility. That's the kind of combination. And what, how does that make sense? Well, we need to understand what it takes to jump, you know, a bike 30 meters and do a double flip to be able to implement that same competence in terms of material making, construction, and so forth into our utility bikes that are meant, you know, to you know to last for a long time. And that said, um, uh, you know, uh, when we started, when I realized that I had an idea of, of developing our bikes, and this goes on and on and on. Uh, there was nothing off the shelf that I could use, and there was, you know, different to what what the others were doing, just using off the shelf stuff and then changing drivetrain. Uh, uh, my take was that let's see what can be done if we optimize the combination between the electric drivetrain and a, a, an appropriate chassis. And that said, there was nothing that we could use off the shelf, so we had to start from the beginning. So engineering, tooling, making, and so forth is done from scratch. So that said, you know, look at our first bike, the Calc, it has three standard parts, which is basically foot pegs, rubber handles, and brake levers. Everything else is, you know, developed and, and, and made from scratch. And that's how we could actually get to the point of lowering the weight and making this agile kind of new category experience. And this is something that we continue doing. And then you would say that, that this is cynical, but again, because what we do in that sense from the sustainable you know, commercial side of things is that as everything is developed from scratch, there's no spare parts or consumables and so forth that can be you know, bought anywhere. So we kind of end up having a, an extended compliance with our users over time. Yeah. And that kind of you know, serves and 
you know, our, 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 our sustainability from a business perspective as well. So that's another broad explanation or, 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 right. or backdrop to what we're doing. And, and then I'm looking at all your mark, a lot of your marketing campaign. I see that you guys focus on a lot of business uh, side and, uh, yeah. you know, like uh, construction work or, uh, you know, like you guys focus yeah. on all these different businesses. How, how much, cause, cause in, in America, you don't, you don't see that like people avoid motorcycles and scooters as much as possible. It's more of a, yeah. a luxury or a fun hobby. Yeah. How, how, in Europe, how how much are people really using their motorcycles to do construction work and transport yeah. tools and equipment? I, I think that when it comes to construction work and so forth, it's still uh, you know uh, at its its baby stage. But what happens in Europe right now, and it's very important, and this or or, or it's it's at high speed, I would say, is that that if you'd asked me a year ago, hey Stefan, tell me what's your business to business customer? Who is it? And I would have said that that's a sustainability oriented last mile delivery or, you know, delivery company. And uh, today I would say that in Europe, unless that same company has a fossil free solution within the, the next 24 months, they'll be out of business. And what has happened in Europe now is that what used to be visions and values has become lawmaking regulations. So cities like Paris being in the forefront, they're simply banning cars from their cities. Mm. Meaning that if you need to bring anything into town, if you're a plumber and you know having to bring your tools and your pipes and whatever, you can you, know, you can walk, you can bicycle, you ride a bike, you, you you can you know take a bus, but it's not very you know uh, effective in that sense. So uh, that's one thing which is growing uh, as a consequence of that. But more importantly, I'd say that seventy five percent of what we do is is about last mile delivery, which is basically Parcels, food, uh, stuff like that, and this is growing rapidly now. So Paris being in the forefront, followed by Berlin, Madrid, uh, Barcelona, Holland decided to ban cars throughout their cities by 2025 and so forth. So that change is is, wow, is, is quickly, and of course, I mean, uh, U.S. cities are are kind of you know infrastructurally designed differently, but I think that what we're doing in California now is that looking at all of the you know. The, 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 the you know necklace of pearls of small towns along the coast where it makes sense to use something else than your car if you're just going down to the beach or if you're going to yeah. pick up your kids from school or if you're going you know grocery shopping whatever it might be so there's this change uh where where the vehicle has its different kind of uh reason uh, depending on, on on different geographies and different you know lifestyle or or or, or again regulations I, i'd guess yeah, that, that that's that's very interesting. What's happening? How they're banning cars left and right, and and yeah. and with that war going on, obviously prices of gasoline are getting more expensive. Gasoline yeah, yeah, yeah. producing yeah. vehicles. Yeah, and also I would say that also on the you know on the consumer side, like so, Paris decided uh, the first of April last year that anyone who has a uh, combustion and in two wheeler, and there's a lot of commuting in Paris. Everyone has like a best for something. Uh, but then you're obliged to pay a 20 euro parking ticket on a daily basis. Now with electric, you park for free. So with the ability of financing a customer, you know, at 65 dollars or euros per, per, per month, you know, payoff is in three and a half days. So again, all of these initiatives uh, are really pushing this 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 at high speed. Uh, we had an inquiry. Uh, we started entering into Asia during fall. We had an inquiry from the the, uh, the Japanese post office the other day. A huge number of bikes, and uh, the reason for that is basically that the government has decided that anything which is governmental needs to be net zero within the next fourteen months. So everything is just swept swept away. So again, the, I'd say it's it's you know it's for us and 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 everyone in the space. So we're not alone. But I think that the space itself is really you know transitioning fast very yeah probably would you agree that it's transitioning more f faster now than ever before than ever before because because before i would imagine you would have more regulations and you'd have to jump more hoops and get certified and your bike yeah, has yeah. to do this and perform I mean, there's, there's a lot of you know I, I was is it easy no i think that we have specific challenges and they're different you know certification uh demands you know between different markets and so forth so it's a bit complicated but again when it comes to uh, you know zero emission and 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 banning combustion and 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 other types of vehicles, 
this this pace is very high in some of the the, the big asian markets in europe and i'd say that um there's a perception in america where you know california and west coast of course and northeast is ahead when it comes to attitude and uh, we'll see how, how quick and uh, we can also see you know in europe there is you know 65 percent of our sales would be business to business and 35 consumer wow in america it's it's probably you know 75 percent consumer and 25 percent business to business uh can you talk about the the, the certifications and uh the process yeah. that you're supposed to you know comply yeah. with, with government so there is there is the u.s uh standards that are a little less complicated than than the european ones uh and then there are very local you know legislations from from country to country in asia so we work together with a um, a large group uh, named idiada id id i d idiada uh and uh, they do all of our, our our certifications for for all markets pretty much uh, but it's it's truly complex, anyways, because uh, again, there's a different uh, you know with with Japan now, for instance, um, uh, which is the only country so far where we need to have ABS brakes on all our bikes. So that differs from you know whatever else. And then uh, there there there's no common perspective, you know, uh, which is stupid. Like uh, not saying that either is better, but in America. There's a certain dense distance between the blinkers that we need to, you know, to 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 meet, uh, and there's another sizing and, and and distance between the blinkers in, in, in Europe. So I think that being in this space, uh, there's a lot of stupidity where that you know doesn't have to do with safety or anything else that should you know be kind of embraced and using the same standards for practical reasons. But anyhow, so it's 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 challenging with the different certifications. And each country, and each city, each state. Yeah. yeah yes. Yes. One of the benefits, though, compared to uh, to combustion, is that as as it's digital, we can actually tune uh, everything software wise uh, to make sure that it complies with anything from speed to horsepower and stuff like that. Uh, can, can you tell, can you explain uh, region, region? Do you guys have yeah. region? Yeah, yeah. So, so region is, is something that happens automatically. It's something that that uh, companies seem to act as a marketing, you know, uh, USP. But it's 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 actually built in with the the, the the concept of the electric motor. So, when the motor is being run without throttling, it creates its own energy. So it, it's it's the the, the the kind of resistance to the motor when it's not being activated through uh, through electricity. It regain and and you know push back uh, or or, 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 or re in, reinvest that that uh, that charging to the batteries. That's very entrepreneur. So, uh, reinvest. Yeah. <laughs> so in that sense, it's 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 like um, everyone has region. Uh, some companies choose to push that a, a big thing. And to be perfectly honest, if you, if you are in a really hilly kind of situation and going downhill, that region is going to pay off. But right. if you're on flatland, regen is you know a couple of percent where you can gain by just motor braking and, and and letting that that happen. So again, sometimes it's it's really valuable. At other times, it's like it doesn't make much sense. It doesn't make much sense. Now, now my problem with regen on certain vehicles is sometimes it's a lot stronger than other vehicles. Like as soon as yeah. you let go of the gas, it it, it almost stops. And, yeah, yeah. and again, sometimes there's benefits to that because it, it's also saving your brakes and saving your yeah, brake yeah. pads. It's, yeah. like, it's like downshifting. Yeah. It's like downshifting. So we have we have preset uh, braking modes on our bike. So either it's a freewheeling thing, which is if you're more of a mountain biker, for instance, and would go on our off-road bikes, you might prefer you know get getting that freewheel. And then you have uh, you know resistance like a two-stroke or a four-stroke. So you can decide yourself. What kind of you know braking power that for? So you can adjust it. Would, would be my main yeah. question. Yeah. Um, how does how does Cake address concerns around charging infrastructures and range anxiety, and what steps is the company taking to promote EV adoption to uh, educate? Well, to start with, I'd say that that many times we're being asked, "Hey, so what happens when when the battery goes out in the middle of nowhere?" And my question to to, to whoever whoever is asking uh, is that. So what happens to you? You know, if you're uh, on a gasoline bike, 
what happens when you're out of petrol or gasoline in the middle of, of you know, you, you simply need to roll the, 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 your vehicle back again. Yeah. So in that sense, no difference. And I'd say that uh, the challenge with, with electric still is that when it comes to, um, you know, commuting and, and highway, um, uh, you, you, you kind of drive the battery too fast. Uh, they're super for, I'd say, you know, a um, tw 20 mile radius for commuting and stuff like that. Uh, and you just, you know, you just bring your battery with it. So you, if you're a commuter and park it outside your office, you just bring the battery, you know, to your desk. And ch ch you know, charge it from the wall socket. So, so just, and then as your, yeah, you it's like you lift it. Takes fifteen seconds. Amazing. So that is super practical. Uh, and uh, but on, on when you're off road, uh, you know, you, you have a battery. You know, a battery uh, would take you, uh, you know, three to four hours in the woods. And after three or four hours, you're absolutely dead. So. But then again, if you have another battery, uh, you just swap. And we have the situation, right? We have this, this amazing colleague of ours, Sini Gottwald, who just rode from Barcelona to Cape Town. It took her 124 days. It was on a Cape Cal bike, and she just finished like two weeks ago now. And she brought one extra battery with her, and um, she didn't have any, you know, preset and on where to charge or anything. She just went off. And she's been able to charge her, her bike and the batteries. Um, you know anything from getting to a small village in the middle of nowhere where someone had a diesel power station and somewhere else you know at a wall socket here and there and so forth and uh, the beauty is that she went from barcelona to cape town 124 days the only issue she had was one flat tire wow. else than that been you know so again i think that the the the, the, the frustration or the risk uh electric bikes the way they're constituted right now it, they will never be, you know, a cruising kind of coast-to-coast uh, uh, -coast, uh, uh, endeavor vehicle because they must they're they're appropriate for short uh, distances. But again, what happened in Africa right now proves that you know you can do it. Yeah, it, it's it's not impossible. I I, I think. Especially if you plan it out, and and besides the point, most people that use it for commute only live only travel five miles. It's, it's usually yeah, yeah, so it's not even that big. Yeah. Uh, what about partnerships and collaborations? Well, there is uh, a few that I would like to mention. I think that that one of the most beautiful collab collaborations we have is together with the Southern African Wildlife College, and that's uh, a project that has to do with anti poaching. So that specific project was initiated, or I had a friend, you know, he told me, I didn't know this. He, he told me that, hey, uh, you know, I don't know if you, you know this, Stefan, but I'm into, uh, I'm an African hobbyist, uh, into conservationist. All right, and he loved riding our bikes, and he said, you know, this would be beautiful because we're using um, uh, combustion engine bikes in Africa to, you know, to, to, to chase down, down uh, poachers. But the problem is that they're so noisy and loud that they're being heard 45 minutes ago. So the guys just pack up and leave before we get there. And he said that if you could make us a bike um, that would, you know, silently be able to sneak up on these poachers, uh, uh, our, you know, level of, of, of efficiency would, you know, go that way. So that said, and I said, we can do that. The next challenge was, the challenge was, was you know, can we make a solar power solution for so we can charge these bikes in the field? And, uh, you know, I called out our friends at Youth at Gold Zero, uh, asking if they'd be willing to invest on, on, you know, on a mobile solar panel project in this sense. And they, they oh. did. Nice. So uh, all of these bikes, they're never sapping the grid. They're 100% solar uh, charged. And we can move around these solar panel uh, power stations. And uh, the, 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 the anti-poachers sneak up on these guys, you know, like this. So that's Red super fun. Yeah, yeah, they get them right. So that's one example. But we have a number of different uh, uh, amazing. Uh, we have another thing which you know uh, worthwhile mentioning. But the, the, what we're doing with Vattenfall, which is a big European power company, is that we're doing the first fossil-free vehicle to be launched commercially in 2025, and that's something where we turn every nut and bolt in that sense uh, to make sure that we get as far as possible. Will we ever come to 100% fossil-free? Of course not. Uh, but we might get to, uh, you know, 85, 90% compared to where we're at right now. So it's a product that we'd never be able to run ourselves unless we had this power company behind us investing tens of millions of dollars into this project. Wow. 
Talking about sound, uh, can you guys control or or control or manipulate the sound of the bikes? We could, uh, but we're not doing it right now. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, there will be a situation around the corner uh, where we need to activate sound because when the whole you know landscape becomes silent uh, and we need to share the space between pedestrians and and and, and those riding whatever uh, vehicle there ha has to be some kind of, of, of way of noticing so you know I, I think that w what will happen we'll see but you know depending on, on whether you prefer Jimi Hendrix or Aretha Franklin or whatever it might, there might be different ways of activate the, your personal sound that's where we're at right now yeah it's interesting because you know I, I have a lot of experience with like harley davidson's really loud exhaust and people say yeah. loud pipes save lives and i'm like yeah. you know I've, I've ridden for so long that i i agree and don't and, and don't agree i agree yeah. that when you're when you're in slow traffic and you're splitting lanes yes people yeah. can hear you and they move but yeah. once you hit 25 miles an hour 30 miles an hour it doesn't make much of a difference because the sound goes behind you and they only yeah. hear you after you pass them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and this is, I've, I've been riding 20 years, 20 plus years in LA traffic and that's yeah. always the case. It's only like under 15 miles an hour where it's like I can rev and yeah. cars move. But at higher speeds, it, it, that's not the case. Mm, and, interesting. And I, I, and when you t I didn't think about it, but again, just being you know, in your car, it's 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 like the shock you get is that when you're being passed, exactly, and then it's you know surprise, yeah. Then, then it's surprise, and then I mean you got to consider. I guess, I guess there's a mathematical way of figuring this out because if you figure you know car closed insulated it it blocks yeah. off for like a hundred and thirty what decibels or something like that. Yeah. So even if you're louder than that and you're coming up from behind, I, I don't know. It's like I said, I can I, I can argue the yeah. point either way. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, finally, what message does Cake hope to communicate to consumers and stakeholders about the importance of sustainable transportation and the role that electric vehicles can play in achieving a more sustainable future? I think that, that our, you know, we all have an obligation towards this planet, and uh, I'm not saying that we're going to solve it ourselves, but we want to contribute in a positive way to create inspiration around the opportunity or or alternative in using something like what we do uh, on our, you know, common path collectively needing to change, you know, means and, and attitude and behavior and so forth. Because there is a bit of a problem speaking about whether or wherever we want to, you know, point that. Uh, this is something that, that, and this is, you know, we're only on this planet for maybe, you know, 80 or 100 years in the best of cases. So we, we, you know, we, it's, it's very much a combination between um, sharing values, uh, inspiring with something that has a, uh, an edge, a fun edge to it. So that is important. And I'd say that, that um, for anyone, where are your listeners? Are they all over America or? Yeah, my, my, I, have, I have Europe as well, but it's mostly uh, United States and South America. Uh, I would say is that, you know, with, you know, doing a bit of, of advertising here, like in L.A., uh, we have a recently opened uh, cake showroom and retail and test center, uh, which is across, uh, you know, uh, the Harley Davidson store on Lincoln Street uh, or Lincoln. Ab it's, it's Lincoln Avenue, right? Correct. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we have another, you know, uh, 50 those in, in large cities around the world. And what I would like to do, you know, come and, you know, come and visit, come and test drive because it's the feel and touch and getting to, to, to ride a bike, but that really open, you know, whether you're a traditional motorcyclist or a newcomer, it's a, a wonderful and a new experience. So, you know, come and try. Absolutely. Do you, and then uh, you do need a motorcycle license for... Yeah, okay. depending on different, you know, we have anything from, from you know, uh, mopeds where, you know, you need to be 15 years and older to to uh, light and medium heavy motorcycles. So depending on what, you know. What model. It, yeah, what model, so yes. And then, uh, sorry, I'm gonna ask you one more question. Uh, as an yeah. entrepreneur, uh, where do you stand with Cake? What's your goal? Do you wanna sell the company? Do you wanna grow with it to the end of it? What, what's... I, I, yeah, I have no such ideas. Uh, I never started a company ever to sell it. Uh, I started companies because, because I had to. I, you know, I couldn't hold back. 
So I'm, 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 uh, you know, enjoying myself, and it, you know, it's not like I'm having fun at all times. It's a constant challenge dealing with issues and problems and so forth. But I kind of love that. So yeah. just you know, the, the, the way forward, improving, 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 and then taking a step back, realizing that I was on, you know, in the wrong direction, and then redirecting, and then moving on again. So I've told myself that my plan is to be operational here until 2030, which is now like seven years, six and a half, seven years ahead. What happens after that? I don't have a clue. I might, you know, do another 10 years, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, I've seen many interviews uh, that you've done before. Uh, I, I love your product. I love what you've done. I want to say congratulations, and I want to say thank you for giving me the time to talk to you. And I will definitely be checking out your bikes uh, this week. I, I, I wasn't aware that there was one so close. Yeah, cool. Yeah, th thank you very much for your time. And then real quick, just to confirm, uh, ridecake.com, right? Yes, correct. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hope to see you live at some point. We will. It's a small world. Yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.